Paul McFadden uh, contacted me and asked if uh, I wanted to take a look inside one of these Eco OBT, OBD2 units. Um, because he didn't really have the courage to plug it into his own car, and I'm not really surprised I don't actually have the courage to plug it into my car either, because um, the point of this is that this is supposed to be a fuel-saving device, and you simply plug it into the onboard diagnostics port of your vehicle, and then you click the little button inside, and it resets it, and then it's going to uh, apparently analyse your driving for the next 200 kilometres or miles or whatever, and then it will start changing the settings of your engine management system. I'm not sure I'd really want anything from China to start doing stuff like that. So, um, to give you a, an indication here, uh, these are other OBT OBD2 units. Now, these are also Chinese knockoff type things. The white ones are most recent. I have not plugged any of these into my car yet. I'm still summoning up the courage because uh, these things all have the potential to do horrific things. But the idea of OBD2 is that all modern cars have a little socket uh, in the vicinity of the driver that you can plug this in. And the case of these ones that are Bluetooth, these will connect to something like your Android phone. And if you've got an Android phone, which like a lot of us have, you can download an app called um, Torque and then connect to these and it will let you analyse what's happening to your engine. I mean, it, it won't interfere with your engine. All that Torque does is it lets you see like oxygen ratios, how much fuel's being consumed and fuel mixes and all the sort of diagnostics that the manufacturer's built in. And the nice thing about the Torque application is it lets you log these um, while you're driving, so it can also detect faults occurring, you know, misfiring of cylinders or, or fuel blockages. And it can also be used to reset warning lights for uh, if something has caused a blip in your engine, maybe water got onto a connector and caused a false oxygen reading, etc. So they're, they're interesting little devices. I will be uh, using this. I'm not sure how great a video it would actually make doing it. But anyway, what we have here is this device that does... Com claim that it plugs into the OBD port, onboard diagnostic, and it changes, it rewrites data to the engine. Now, I wasn't aware that was even possible, to be honest. Um, here's a sort of rough idea of the OBD connector. It's got um, the plus 12 volts, um, it's got the chassis ground and the signal ground, and then it's got various networks. It's got the uh, the most important, for as far as I'm concerned, is the canvas network. These two connections here, canvas high and canvas low. And it just basically lets you communicate with the engine management system. Now, the engine management system, theoretically, the only information that comes out that port should just be diagnostics. It shouldn't have access to other parts of the car management system for safety. But the car car companies didn't really consider, you know, that people would start hacking it. And some of them, it turns out, you can upload firmware into the car engine computers, which sounds a terrible idea for something you're driving along the road at high speed. Um, but on the whole, generally speaking, this is purely diagnostic, and there's various networks, canvas networks in the car. The canvas network is, is interesting in its own right. It was originally developed for the automotive industry. But um, now it's used widely in engineering, and uh, if you go up to an elevator and you press the call button in the, on a landing, there's a very good chance that the only wires connected to that are power and data, and it's on a canvas network for all the call buttons down the full length of the shaft. And likewise, the call panel inside the shaft is probably on its own canvas network. But anyway, uh, let's uh, open this. Now, it's worth noting that with these ones, uh, you can just pop a screwdriver in, and hoik it out, and there's the circuit board with like microcontroller um, on the top, and then the little Bluetooth chip here, and just various connections and power supplies down the bottom PCB. But this one is glued shut. Now, do you think they might be trying to keep us out? Hmm, I think we have to break our way into this. It's also interesting to note that uh, this one has the little notch missing out here. Uh, this is, there are two versions of the OBD2. One is designed for uh, 24 volt systems, you could, so you won't be, this is a 12 volt one, you will not be able to put it into, say, a Lorry's OBD2 port, just because it's, you know, it's designed to protect it from the higher voltage. This one uh, appears to accommodate that as well, I think they're just covering all grounds here. So I'm going to try roughly to get this open. I think it's going to be destructive. I don't think it's going to come out very easily. 
And if I don't have any luck with this, I'll pause momentarily while trying to... I mean, it's making scrunching noises. Sorry, Paul, this isn't going in anyone's vehicle from this point, I don't think. It's worth 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 noting that uh, there are uh, rogue tools available for OBT OBD uh, that uh, say, for instance, the BMWs because they're an expensive vehicle are targeted by criminals, quite high tech criminals. That, quite frankly, I mean, ultimately, like you and me, they're just they pretty much enjoy hacking stuff, and it's almost like a puzzle. It's like a challenge. So there are tools that you can plug into a BMW's OBD port and it will defeat sections of the security system or it'll um, reprogram security keys. I think I might have to pause because this is not coming open too easy. Although, surely I must be there, almost there. They really don't want us going in here, do they? Oh, good. Oh, they really don't want us in here. Yeah, you know what? I'm just going to pause until I've opened this. I'll be back shortly. OK, well, a little bit of heat later, because that was indeed a bitch to get off. Um, so here's the unit. Let's uh, trace out and see if there's power coming up to the top. I see it's got a row of six LEDs here. Uh, there is what looks like a microcontroller on the back. Um, and a crystal for that microcontroller. And what looks, well, let's have to take a look at it, looks as though it could be a voltage regulator. 78MO5. It's a 5 volt voltage regulator. So um, let's uh, check this out with a meter. Let's uh, check continuity. So, looking at the canvas uh, pin layout, I would expect this to be the positive and possibly going up to there. OK, that's a good start. So, positive is going through a diode to the... a protection diode to the regulator. And the... Now, is it going to be chassis or signal positive, negative? It's going to be both of them. OK, so they're both common together, the two grounds. So I'm just going to jam that lead up there. And go on to the ground, and try and jam that lead up there. And try and go on to the ground of the voltage regulator. Yep, continuity to that. So there does have power going up to it. What about the uh, data? Um, so we've got the canvas is on pin 6 and 14, which would be here. Oh, I've got data coming up through from the canvas. OK, what about the other networks? Um, Uh, 2 and 10 are another pair. Uh, that's the what they call the SAE network. I'm sh not sure if that's just a standard serial protocol. Yep. And it's matching pin. Oop. One off here. Okay. And that just leaves the other network it could have is 7 and pin 7 and 15. So that would be these ones. Now, if this is the case, and these things are connected to the microcontroller, then it's probably doing something, but having said that, there's so many different vehicles that it would have to be able to identify the vehicle and type of engine. And does it have access? They're all connected. Let's power it up with uh, 12 volts then. Let's get that set for 
12 volts here, so I want to go on to this pin here and the negatives which will be there let's see what happens when I power it up ok, little uh, LED show ok, it's doing the I am busy and active, now it's pretending to send data maybe it is trying to communicate with the OBD network or one of the other networks or is it just putting on a little light show? Not 100% sure. I think it would be a fairly complex thing for a vehicle to actually analyse. You know, it claims it analyses your driving and tunes the engine to that, but I, I'm not really sure because this does seem to contain at the very least a microcontroller and it does seem to be connected to all the the actual networks in the car. Um, this is perplexing, I'm not 100% sure. What if I press the reset button? Is it going to do anything? When you plug the thing into the car for the first time it's supposed to um, reset it so it starts analysing your driving from that point. Ah. <sighs> The only way you could really test this properly is to actually plug it into some sort of engine simulator which would be quite a major task and see if it was doing anything. Um, I'm quite perplexed, I don't 100% know if this is actually trying to do something real or if it's just, you know, faking and just trying to be convincing by having the pins brought up to the microcontroller. Maybe it does actually, with some vehicles it does actually do something. But the question is, would you trust a, a little eBay device uh, from China, would you trust that with modifying your engine settings? So this uh, seems to be spending a lot of time just randomly blinking what I guess might be a communication light. It might be just polling for a response from the from the computer or it might just be flickering that to make it look as though there's loads of data and stuff happening. I'm not really sure. Oh, now that's gone off. Now all the LEDs are off. It's pulsing that LED. Maybe this is a low energy mode just to... I haven't a clue. I really I really haven't a clue if this is real or not. I just I think the, if you're into your uh, car engine control systems then you, you could probably make an educated guess where this could have that function but certainly I did a bit of research on the internet and there was nothing that really showed that you can really make a significant difference to your engine um, by you know, just doing stuff through the OBD port. Um, it usually takes a complete new chip in your engine management system that physically changes things like uh, upper rev limits or, you know, changes things that the manufacturer deliberately set back to limit stresses in the engine, perhaps. So um, I'm not really sure. Um, it's, I haven't a clue if this is going to do anything or not. And uh, it may be one of these things, you plug it into your car and then you convince yourself it's doing something when, you know, it really isn't, particularly when you've got to... It, has, it does it over this long period of time, it suggests. I mean, you could virtually just plug one of these in and just leave it in and you might think you're getting the same results. So um, I, I haven't a clue, uh, but certainly if you guys uh, want to weigh in the comments below and tell me what you think about this, whether it's real or not, um, because uh, I, I just haven't a clue if this is uh, likely to be able to do that or not. Oh, there it goes again. It's going through its uh, little busy sequence. It's almost like it's starting up again from the start. Yeah, I, I, I haven't a clue. I really don't know if this is real or not, or if it's just an elaborate uh, hoax like so many of the fuel things are. But yeah, it's, uh, lay, lay into the comments down below and tell me what you think.